Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 6 Again David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baalie of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God, and Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and on psalteries, and on timbrels and on cornets and on cymbals. And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. And David was displeased, because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day, and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they that bare the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord, and set it in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men, to every one a cake of bread, and a good piece of flesh, and a flagon of wine. So all the people departed every one to his house. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. And David said unto Michael, It was before the Lord, which chose me before thy father and before all his house, to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. And I will yet be more vile than thus, and will be base in mine own sight. And of the maidservants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honour. Therefore Michael the daughter of Saul had no child unto the day of her death. Psalm 104 Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honour and majesty who coverest thyself with light as with a garment, who stretchest out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains, they go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over. 
that they turn not again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle, and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted, where the birds make their nests. As for the stork, the fir trees are her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey, and seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth, they gather themselves together, and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work, and to his labor, until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. There go the ships. There is that Leviathan, whom thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. That thou givest them they gather. Thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth, and it trembleth. He toucheth the hills, and they smoke. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. I sometimes wonder what that first Sabbath was like in Eden, the first Sabbath after Adam and Eve were created. Did God and the angels gather with them to have a Sabbath service? Did the animals gather round them? It must have been a wonderful sight to behold and an experience to experience. And one of these days, if we remain faithful in our service and our love for God, we will experience the joy of worshipping with the heavenly hosts. Good morning and a happy Sabbath to you and your family. Today we are focusing on 2 Samuel chapter 6 and Psalm 104. 2 Samuel chapter 6 and Psalm 104. I'm reading now 2 Samuel chapter 6 verses 3. 6, 7, 10, and 11. The Bible states, And they set the ark of God upon a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Aminadab that was in Gibeah, and Ozah and Ahihu, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Ozah put forth his hand to the ark of God, and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Today's message is entitled, When the Ceremonies Crashed. When the Ceremonies Crashed. Let us pray, dear God, 
We ask that your Holy Spirit will break through every distraction and focus our attention on your word. For Christ's sake, amen. You know, how we admire the obedience of a dog. How we admire the obedience a dog shows to its master. One Archibald Rutledge wrote that one day he met a man whose dog had just been killed in a forest fire. Heartbroken, the man explained to Rutledge how it happened. He said, because he worked out of doors, he often took his dog with him. That morning, he left the dog in a clearing in the forest and gave him a command to watch his lunch bucket while he went into the forest. His faithful friend, his dog, understood, for that is exactly what he did. He stayed by the lunch bucket. But then a fire started in the woods, and soon the blaze spread to the spot where the dog had been left. But he didn't move. He stayed right where he was, in perfect obedience to his master's word. With tearful eyes, the dog's owner said, I always had to be careful what I told him to do, because I knew he would do it. Now that's obedience. The dog remained in that clearing in the forest and was killed by the forest fire. O oh, friend of mine, O oh, friend of mine, the ultimate expression of our love for Jesus is obedience. We say that again. The ultimate expression of our love for Jesus is obedience. Jesus says in John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, obey me by keeping my commandments. Now, the fate of Uzzah, the fate of Uzzah in our passage for today was a divine judgment upon disobedience. God revealed his displeasure. God revealed his displeasure on account of the violation of a most explicit command. You remember, through Moses, the Lord had given special instruction concerning the transportation of the ark. None but the priest the descendants of Aaron were to touch the ark or even to look upon it. The divine directions were given in Numbers chapter 4 and verse 15. The Bible says in Numbers 4.15, The sons of Kohath shall come to bear it, but they shall not touch any holy thing lest they die. The priests were to cover the ark, and then the Kohathites must lift it by the staves which were placed in rings upon each side of the ark and were never removed. The rings and the staves were never removed. And to the Gershonites and Merarites who were in charge of the curtains and boards and pillars of the tabernacle, Moses gave carts and oxen for the transportation of that which was committed to them. But unto the sons of Kohath he gave none, because the service of the sanctuary belonging unto them was that they should bear upon the shoulders, was that they should bear upon their shoulders. You will find that in Numbers chapter 7 and verse 9. And so in in the bringing up of the ark from Kirjath Jerim, there had been a direct and inexcusable disregard of the Lord's directions. And we can glean some points from what happened in the journey when the Israelites were transporting the ark of God from Kirjath Jerim back to Jerusalem. The first point we can glean is that God can accept no partial obedience or no lax way of treating his commandments. We say that again, God can accept no partial obedience or lax way of treating his commandments. Now David and his people had assembled to perform a sacred work and they had engaged in it with glad and willing hearts. But the Lord could not accept the service because it was not performed in accordance with his directions. And so we say again, God can accept no partial obedience, no lax way of treating his commandments. You know, you know, there are people today who think that they could adjust the divine requirements to suit their fancy. 
we see again there are people today who think that they can adjust the divine requirements to suit their fancy. They say, you know, we will not keep the seventh-day Saturday Sabbath holy and worship God on the seventh-day Saturday. We will worship Him on Sunday in honor of the resurrection. We will honor, we will worship God on Sunday in honor of the resurrection. But friend of mine, the problem is that the problem is that God did not say to do that. God's explicit directions concerning the seventh day Saturday Sabbath are found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11. The Bible says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maidservant, nor thy manservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. So we do not have the authority to adjust the divine requirements to suit our fancy. And if God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, that's what he means. We cannot say, well, we're going to keep Sunday in honor of the resurrection. And because it is in honor of the resurrection, that will please God and he will not punish us. No. What happened to us says that God is not pleased with any lax way or with any disregard or partial obedience to his commandments. The second lesson we can learn is that good intentions towards God won't save us from the punishment of disobedience. We must be his loving, obedient children. The second lesson we can learn from what happened to us is that good intentions towards God would not save us from the punishment of disobedience. We must be his loving and obedient children. God was not impressed with the pomp and ceremony that accompanied the first moving of the Ark of the Covenant from Kirjath Jerim to Jerusalem. God was not pleased with the pomp and the ceremony and the trumpets and, the, and all the fashion and display. Some people think that they can bribe God with, with praise and ceremonies in church and God will overlook the plain disregard of his commandments and the violations of the plain teachings of the Holy Scriptures. God is not impressed by pomp and ceremony when we disregard his fourth commandment and other clear instructions in scripture, you can have the biggest church, but if there are people there who accept and the church condones the gay lifestyle in addition to Sunday worship, God is not pleased. You'll have a nice feeling there in church with the musical instruments, but the presence of God will not be there. The execution of Uzza tells us that God is not to be trifled with and he is not pleased with pomp and ceremonies. As a matter of fact, at one time, God had to remind his people Israel in Isaiah chapter 1. He says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 11, To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, said the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bulls, or of lambs, or of he goats. When you come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moon and sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meetings, your new moons and your appointed feast. My soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, when you make many prayers, I will not hear you. Your hands are full of blood. What I require of you now, he says in verse 16 to 18, is wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. 
Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. And by the way, lest someone jumps on this, God was not saying that the Israelites should throw away his seventh-day Sabbath. No, rather he was telling them, when you come to worship me on the Sabbath, make sure you're right with me. Be obedient in other areas. Don't just come and have wonderful ceremonies and worship services and you're not living for me and obeying me in other areas. Another point we can glean from this story is that some may wonder why the Philistines were not executed in the same manner for touching the ark. Why were the Philistines not executed in the same manner for touching the ark? Friend of mine, the answer is that the Philistines, who had not a knowledge of God's law, had placed the ark upon a cart when they returned it to Israel, and the Lord accepted the effort which they made in their ignorance. They did not know about all the requirements. They just put the ark on a cart and sent it away. We say that again. The reason why the Philistines were not struck dead like Uzzah was that the Philistines, who had not a knowledge of God's law, had placed the ark upon a cart when they returned it to Israel and the Lord accepted the effort which they made. But the Israelites, but the Israelites had in their hands a plain statement of the will of God in all these matters and their neglect of these instructions was dishonoring to God. And so the Bible in Acts chapter 29 to 31 explains it in this way. The Bible says, For as much then as we are the offsprings of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. Acts 17 verse 30 says, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. In other words, Paul was deriving some comfort from the thought that ignorance of God's requirements and commandments lessened the guilt of and the punishment due to the heathen world. They did not know of God's requirements and they were worshiping idols because they did not know of God's requirements. And so God overlooked punishment. In the past ages of the world, there had been a passing over of men's sins in that full retribution had not fallen upon the sinners. This was due to the forbearance of God, as is mentioned in Romans 3.25. However, when the light of truth comes to us, God expects us to be obedient to the truth. And so Paul continues now in Acts 17.30 by saying, But now command that all men everywhere to repent, now that you know the truth about idols that God says don't worship any graven image. Now that you know, the Bible says, but now commandeth he all men everywhere to repent because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. O friend of mine, let us learn from the experience of Uzzah and what occurred when the Israelites were transporting the ark from Kirjat Jirim to Jerusalem? Let us learn from the incident when the ceremonies were crushed because God executed Uzzah by the ark. And may God help us not to take God for granted like Israel and Uzzah, but to love and obey him because he is our loving heavenly Father. Let us pray, dear God. Thank you so much that in spite of your strict requirements, you are indeed a loving Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear Lord, that Jesus is the best thing that has happened to us. That you gave him, you allowed him to take the punishment that our sins deserved. Thank you, dear Lord, that he volunteered. He was willing to die in our place that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you for this Sabbath day that you've given us. A day to rest physically and spiritually in you. A day to connect with our Heavenly Father. May we, Lord, today experience the joy of worshipping in your presence. 
Remember those who've made prayer requests, Lord. We bring them all before you and ask that you will answer someone in a special way on this, your holy Sabbath day. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.